My name is Olivia Abtahi. I'm a film director and I make approximately $80,000 a year. My relationship to money is a strained one. I would say when I was a freelancer, I, I never knew when my next paycheck was going to come in, so I had to be very careful about the expenses I was incurring. Um, just things like getting a haircut were expenses I thought were too lavish for me at the time. Um, I was saving every penny f to upgrade my equipment, be it a camera, a new laptop, new mics. Everything I earned pretty much went back into my business. Now I definitely feel more in control of my finances now that I have a steady 9-to-5 job. And on top of that job, I do have freelance work that also pads my budget. And it's definitely a better relationship. I don't feel guilty taking my car in for an oil change anymore, which is amazing. I've also gotten just a lot better about monitoring and tracking my income. I use a lot of different pieces of software to monitor my budget, um, you know, my personal budget, my expenses, my business expenses. So that that way I'm also being good about writing off deductions, things that I can expense to a business instead of just incurring the cost on myself. And... Um, also, being married and in a committed partnership, I think, helps as well because there were months when I was a freelancer where I would say, I just can't help you with the mortgage this month. And my husband would say, that's all right. Like, just get me back next month. And, you know, it worked out. Or there'd be times where I would take a loan out from my husband for, you know, $1,000 here or $1,000 there. And he would, you know, interest-free be like, that's totally fine. You can just pay me back later. And um, I'm really lucky I had that base of support because I never, you know, had a situation where I couldn't pay my bills on time. It was just I maybe had to be a little in debt to make it happen. The cost of living in Denver is pretty amazing compared to other cities I've lived in, like New York and San Francisco and D.C., where I'm from. So what we love about it is that we can drive to the grocery store in the car that we own, which is crazy after living in New York. That, like, never happens. Um, but we can also, you know, buy a house and still be two blocks walking from a movie theater. So um, it's this nice kind of middle ground. It's not too crazy. The traffic isn't horrible, although locals will say the traffic is horrible. This is nothing. Um, and we just love that it's... Uh, a really high quality of life where if we want to go out into the mountains or go do something outdoors, it's literally like a 15 minute drive instead of, you know, a two hour schlep on, you know, Metro North. My monthly income is around 5200 a month and that's pre-tax and that changes just because sometimes I have freelance income that's coming in. So, you know, as a bonus, I'll, you know, maybe make an extra 3000 that month and I'll put that away into a 401k or a savings account. Um, then my taxes and payroll deductions from the 5200 that's set is around $1,200 a month. So that means that my take-home income is $4,000. In terms of my actual mortgage, our set mortgage amount is $1,900 a month, and that includes insurance, all that good stuff. Um, gas and electric, around $50 a month. We're lucky that in Denver, Colorado, it's not as expensive as other cities. We recently did cut the cord in our home. We no longer have cable and we just have a lump bundle of internet and TV. So that's $50 a month. And I do deduct that as an expense because Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, those are all things I need as a film director to be able to watch and keep up with movies and um, use for my own business. Our phone plans, me and my husband are on a joint family phone plan, um, and that's around $40 a month. My car, I'm very lucky. I drive a Prius that my mom handed down to me, and the gas on that thing is only like $30 a month. If at all, I would say I like only fill up the tank once a month, which is amazing. Um, and then student loans, I have zero debt, which I am super proud of. <laughs> um, and then for food and groceries, I would say that's probably one of our biggest expenses. I am allergic to gluten. I have a horrible gluten intolerance. So we invest a little more in groceries and spend about $400 a month or $100 a week. Um, some of the other expenses that I need just to not go crazy, <laughs> um, about $50 a month for the gym. I love taking classes here in Denver, Colorado. My birth control is $25 a month and that is subsidized and that's the current price now, though it is set to increase. Um, other expenses like Amazon Prime running movies, uh, my Spotify account, that's, 
you know, $30 a month, and I do consider those essentials. Um, and then for my software that I need to do my job, the Adobe Suites, primarily what I use, and that is on the cloud subscription service, and that's $50 a month. In terms of, like, fun things, just going out, um, going to, you know, restaurants and getting drinks, that's about $100 a month. Although sometimes if I'm meeting with a client over drinks or dinner or lunch, I will expense that. And then in terms of seeing movies, that's really important to me. We live like three blocks from a movie theater. So I spend about $50 on movies a month, and that's for me and my husband. So that means my leftover funds. I have about $1,225 every month, and I instantly put $400 of that in savings. I do not have a 401k matching plan like most people do at a 9-to-5 job. So I have my own Roth IRA that I'm always making sure to put it into. I definitely have individual financial goals. My goal for 2018 is to make $100,000 a year with my extra freelance income that I'm making, regardless of whatever my salary becomes. Um, that's important to me just to show that you can be a creative and still make a six-figure salary, even if you're just starting out or if you've been in it for 10 years. Um, me and my husband have the joint dream of owning a Tesla. That's like number one. Um, and we also want to be able to create a second bedroom in the home that we own just to increase value and eventually have a family. So, you know, that's another goal of ours is to be able to afford a kid, which is really tough these days, especially because I would be working and I would require childcare. And then long term goal way down the line is I would also love to buy my mom a Tesla. Her name is Tessa. So her license plate is going to say Tesla with the two S's.